three keys to trading Minervini VCPs. That is what you are going to learn in this video. I'm going to teach you the three keys and then it's going to be a little bit different. You're actually going to have a test here. I've got 10 charts loaded up for you, some big winners, some big losers dating back some of them over 15 years ago. So I'm going to test your new knowledge. Now, I want you all to get to get a hundred percent correct. Even if you get over 70%, you've done very, very well. So please comment down below your success rate. Whether you get whether you get 100%, 17%, 60%, 80%, let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you're really going to enjoy this video. I'm really trying to, trying to help you and help others improve their trading. So if you appreciate and enjoy that, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave me a comment down below, and let's get into the video and test your knowledge. So as I was saying there in the intro, I'm going to teach you three keys when you're trading Minervini VCPs, which rolls off the tongue very, very well. And remember, there's then going to be a quiz. So I'm going to show you 10 chart, okay, winners and losers. And I want you to play along and see if you can get a 100% win rate on them. If you can get them all correct, if you can get 70% or 80%, that is very, very good going in deed. So what are the three keys when you are trading Minervini VCPs? So the first thing is volatility and volume must be contracting from left to right. Okay. Volatility and volume, okay, diminishing, falling as it moves from left to right. And I'm going to take you through an example in a minute, which visually is hopefully going to really help you when you're analyzing these charts. Remember, you're trying to tell yourself a story between supply and demand and if there is accumulation. The next thing is, is there what I call a bullish synchronicity on the breakout? That is where you get a very large price spread. So the candlestick or the bar is very wide on a relative basis and there is big big volume, big relative volume coming through. Never trust the breakout without big volume. And the third thing, which is going to is gonna help you trade from the strongest stocks, is the relative strength should be making a 52-week high. Now, on TradingView, I have a free relative strength line indicator, which you can use. Just simply search for my name on the TradingView indicators, and you will find it. Those are the three things which you really need to focus on. So I'm going to show you 10 charts in a minute, winners and losers. See if you can get them all right for whether they they were a big winner or whether they were a big loser and you can see down here I have got this this visual pattern of waves and a and a wet towel and a smaller wave what on earth does that mean I call a volatility contraction pattern also a Wyckoff wave pattern because I see the price structure as waves now as these waves are developing from left to right we want to start see, seeing those waves getting smaller. So if you think of a really large storm, there's going to be bigger waves, okay? But as the, as the waves come in, if they're coming into shore and it's a very calm day, the waves are generally going to be much smaller. So as we're progressing here in our price structures from left to right, we should start seeing these waves go from being really big to much much smaller. If you think about a if you think about a towel being very very wet and we were to wring it out, okay, every time you wring the towel out, more water is going to come out. Okay, so there's less water on a subsequent wring of the towel. Think of that as supply being absorbed, supply coming out, selling pressure lessening. So on every ring, every wave that comes that should be getting smaller, there's less and less supply. And that that is why many of these stocks, if they they if they display the proper volatility contraction pattern characteristics, as I've just as I've just explained there as well, they can make explosives explosive moves as they break out through the pivot point. So what I want to do now is I want to load up 10 of our charts and I'm going to ask you whether you think it was a big winner or loser. So keep keep an eye, keep a track of your of your winning percentage, how many you are right, how many you are wrong. Post down in the comment section below how many you get right out of 10. So let's jump on to TradingView and let me show you these 10 charts. So chart number one is Cirrus Logic back in 2010. So I'm going to be showing you charts from 10 years ago, 20 years ago, okay, a year ago, a couple of months ago as well. Just show they work across all time frames. So this is the first one. 
what are you thinking? Was this a big winner or a big loser? Remember, you can pause the video and do your analysis as well. So I'll give you a couple seconds. What do you think? Big winner or a big loser? So I'm going to scroll it through now so you can see whether it was a big winner or a big loser. And you can see this stock here was a very, very big winner, doubling pretty much in the space of a couple months from $8 a share to $16 a share. Now, I wanted to start off with a little bit of an easier one here, okay? So you can see, and I, w I won't go into detailed analysis for all of these, but you can see here, here's wave number one, okay, wave number two, wave number three, and then it's getting very, very tight in here on wave number number four in here. And then do we have, so do we have price volatility and volume, okay, diminishing okay, the, 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 the contraction in both? Yes, we do as we move from left to right. Okay, what I really like about this stock is look how tight everything gets under the pivot point. This is a great indication that supply has stopped coming to the market. Remember that wet towel being wrung out. You can see as well, if I come back a few bars, so we get rid of this really large volume bar. Okay, the day prior to a breakout, here, here's a little bonus tip for you. The day prior to a breakout, you want to identify a candlestick that is extremely tight, just like this one, and the volume is below the 30-day average. And the reason being is this is the market screaming at you. Okay, it's absolutely screaming at you. There is no more supply. Okay, we've been ringing and ringing that towel. No more water is coming out. No more supply is coming out. So then when we break out through that pivot point, okay, the scales of supply and demand just do this. Demand, there's loads and loads of weight coming to the demand side and the stock just powers up out of the gate and explodes out. So hopefully you're able to, to, be, to be successful with saying that one was going to be a big winner. So let's go on to stock number two. So stock number two, we have Smith and Wesson brand. So what are you thinking here? Big winner, big loser. What are we seeing here? What do you think is going to happen? So pause the video if you want before I reveal the answer. So let me scan this forward a little bit and you can see here the stock was a big loser. Now there's a few key characteristics and I'm going to give you some bonus points as we're progressing through this video. This is another thing you really want to identify, okay, in terms of avoiding. You see how this stock here runs up into the breakout. There's no consolidation. If I just draw a box here in that upper third, okay, which I'm drawing here, in that upper third of the base, even the upper half of the base, there's no consolidation. There's no ability to absorb these previous trap buyers. Do you see that? So when the breakout comes here, it gets absolutely smashed by loads and loads of supply. So even though there's really good volume coming through, the breakout candlestick is good. It's running up into the breakout. Now, this is why, do you remember earlier I told you relative strength making a 52-week high or at least matching previous 52-week highs? One of the things you want to do if you want to trade the best breakouts is you see how this relative strength is actually in the context of a of a downtrend as, as well. It's not making a 52-week high. I don't like trading those. I like to see a blue dot on my relative strength line. So hopefully you are two for two and you correct said that was going to be a loser so let's go on to our next one so here we have chart number three which is church and dwight so what are you thinking here big winner or a big loser you ready i'm about to about to show you so remember pause the video if you don't want to know quite yet so let's play this forward a little bit and you can see this stock here keep playing it forward was a big loser okay now this is why I'm trying to drum into you those key, key points that you need to be identifying. Look at the relative strength here. Is that making a higher high or is that making a lower high? Lower highs for the relative strength, extremely bearish. Relative strength, the line, and again, this indicator here is the Jack Corsellis RS line. Just search for it, okay, in your indicators in TradingView. It's completely free. My team was able to build it. There it is, okay, you can search and use that. Okay, it's extremely important. That is at least matching okay, the previous highs, if not moving into new high ground. And we have a nice blue dot, as you may see on some of the other ones. So hopefully you're doing really well and you are three for three. Remember, comment, leave a comment down below how well you do. I'll be really interested to see if you can get if you can get eight, if you can get eight out of ten, or nine out of ten, or even some of you may get ten out of ten. So let's go on to the next one. 
So here is our next chart. This is CRSP is the ticker and this was from last year in November 2020. So what are you thinking here? Are you thinking this is gonna be a big winner or a big loser? Well, let's take a look. Remember, pause the video if you don't wanna see it quite yet. So let's play this forward and you can see this stock here, very, very big winner, doubling in price in the space of a couple of months. Now, what are some of those key characteristics we were looking for, okay? This is stock number four, remember? So look at this here. Do you see how tight everything becomes, how we consolidate right underneath that pivot point, and we have multiple tight candlesticks coming through in here. Look at our volume below the 30-day average, okay? Potentially, we could backdate this base all the way back here, so we have a nice big base, okay? Bigger the cause, bigger the effect. The volume is above the 30 the average. We have a blue dot on our relative strength, bullish synchronicity, okay? And we've gone through several of these waves where we've been ringing and ringing that towel. So hopefully you are four for four or three for four and doing very, very well. So let's go into number five. So this is number five. We are halfway there. So what are you thinking here? This is an IPO base, but do you see how we are still potentially developing that volatility volatility, con, volatility contraction pattern? would help if I could say it, wouldn't it? So looking at this one, do you think this is going to be a big winner or a big loser? What do you think? Remember, pause the video if you don't want to know just yet. So let's play this one forward. So $11, what happened? You can see this powering up 24, $32. This exploded out of the gate. So your best breakout trades are going to explode out of the gate. So what are some of those key characteristics? Remember that ringing of the towel, those waves developing? Do you see how we have one wave in here? We then have our second wave that comes through here, our final wave, very, very tight. And just look how tight these candlesticks are prior to our breakout volume as well, below what would be our 30 day average. And then what do you notice on the on the breakout day? We have bullish synchronicity, a nice widespread volume increasing, and we have a blue dot on our relative strength indicating it's making a 52 week high. So our relative strength line is making a 52 week high. So if you're five for five, comment down below and let me know. Now let's move on to number six. So number six, this is TME, which is Tencent Music Entertainment Group. So what are you thinking here? Is it a good volatility volatility contraction pattern or not? What do you think? So remember, pause the video if you don't want to know. So I'm going to play it forward and you can see big, big winner here. Going from $17 to nearly $30 or so. Okay, very, very nice move indeed. So let's analyze quickly some of these optimal characteristics. So remember the wave analogy and ringing the towel here. Okay, so we have, we could say this is one re this is one wave coming through in here. This is then another wave coming through in here. And then we have our final wave, which is very, very shallow, very calm, very quiet in here. And look how that volume just dries up before the breakout. And look at our multiple tight candlesticks in here. Now, the final wave should be in single digits, okay? Single figures, less than, than 9%. And the tighter, the better, because it makes it much easier for us as traders to be able to control the risk. And this in here has built a really nice big cause. So remember, bigger the cause, bigger the effect. Multiple tight candlesticks is something that you want to look to identify in the base in conjunction with volume very low and below the 30 day average. That just tells us there's not much supply coming to the market. So hopefully you are six for six as we move on to stock number seven. So stock number seven is PetMed Express. Ticker is Pets. So what are you thinking here about this VCP type pattern? You can see we're in the longer term uptrend here. We do have some previous blue dots coming through on our relative strength, but do you think this structure is one which was a big winner or was it a big loser? So let's play it forward and see. So remember, this is number seven. So see if you're seven for seven, this was obviously a big winner and it got absolutely smashed right after the breakout. Now there's a few key characteristics that I'm gonna tell you in here, okay, leading up. I just wanna go forward to get rid of this big volume bar and you can see it a little bit more clearly. So yes, you could say this is maybe tightening up a little bit. We have our vol we have our contractions, okay, the VCP type action 
coming through in here but you see how the volume never really quietens down okay volume is very very key thing to focus on identify as well do you see how it it never really like calms down okay this is this is as much an art as it is a science the volume is sporadic it comes up it goes down it comes up it goes down we want to see that long-term volume just trending down and getting very very quiet okay prior to a breakout where we then have a big increase in volume on our breakouts you can see this one obviously here failed very very quickly and in a hurry so let's go on to stock number eight hopefully a seven for seven let me know down in the comment section below and if you're enjoying this this video and you'd like to see more of these kind of videos please do like it subscribe to the channel as well so let's move on to number eight so our next one is Google and we have gone back to 2004 just after its IPO date. So again, you can see how you can do this on stocks that are from 20 odd years ago nearly now. The likes of Google, obviously very, very well known, lesser known when this base was forming. But do you think this base is displaying those optimal characteristics that are gonna make it a big winner or a big loser? So what do you think? for this base, I'm gonna play it forward and then we'll do a little bit of analysis on it as well. So this is Google here, and Google obviously was a huge winner, built a really nice base, an optimal entry point using the VCP characteristics. So what I wanna do here, just with Google, is just identify, here's wave number one, wave number two. It's almost a cup with handle type pattern as well. Remember, the VCP are characteristics, okay, in terms of the things you want to be looking for for the price and volume characteristics, okay, and the and, 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 and the contraction in price. So we can see here we have bullish synchronicity. Okay, on our breakout we had a pop up in volume, we're probably double our prior day, which is nice and tight. Note these nice tight multiple candlesticks. We have a blue dot coming through on our relative strength as well. And remember the analogy of that towel being rung. Less and less supply coming out, especially in this region in here, prior to our breakout. Obviously, Google got out the gate really, really well. Your best breakout trades are going to explode out of the gate. So that was number eight. Hopefully you are eight for eight or seven for eight. You're doing very, very well. Remember, comment down below, let me know. And let's move on to number nine. So here you go. This is number nine, which is Lumbar Liquidators. LL is the ticker. We are back in 2012 for this one. So Here's the here's the longer term time frame. Here's the here's the base that you are you are analysing. What do you think, winner or loser? So pause the video if you don't want to know quite yet. And I'm going to play this one forward, and you can see Lumbar Liquidators was a huge winner, nearly doubling in price from thirty dollars to fifty fifty five fifty six dollars in the space of a couple of months. So let's go back and just analyse this structure. A, a little bit more there's a few, few there's a few key points here which I want to explain to you so we can see look how this waves okay our waves in this final wave in here okay remember that towel being wrong the waves are getting much much shallower less supply less water okay coming to the market okay think about that towel being wrong and the waves going from big to much much smaller do we have bullish synchronicity on our breakout? Well, we have 30 day average volume. The open is actually the low of this candlestick for the breakout in here. Okay, so it, it, it's okay. It could be could be better. We could have larger volume coming through. We do have a blue dot on our relative strength line, which is obviously great. Now there's very high volume you may have seen the day before, but what is the result of that high volume? This is where we can start looking very deep into the volume and going, okay, there's very high volume but yet the price spread is very, very thin. So do we think this is distributional characteristics or accumulation characteristics? Now the structural context of where this is happening, how the structure is playing out is very, very important. But because it's very large volume here, it's very, very tight, it's within the final kind of contraction, the final wave of this pattern, then it breaks out. This is actually accumulation by the institution. So hopefully you are doing very, very well at guessing whether it is a big winner or a big loser. You're applying the techniques that I've taught you in this video and other videos. So let's move on to our final one and see if any of you can get 10 for 10. Remember, if you do get 10 for 10 or you even do very, very well or you do poorly, let me know down in the comments section below.
So here is your final one. Okay, see if you can get 10 out of 10, 8 out of 10, anything above 7 out of 10, I think is very, very good indeed. So we are back in 2006 here for Croc. So pause the video if you don't want to know the if it's going to be a big winner or a big loser yet, because I'm about to roll it forward. So here we go for Crocs, and you can see this was a very, very big winner indeed. This stock went on an absolute stellar run now i tried to trick you a little bit on this last one because we didn't have a blue dot on our relative strength on the breakout but this is what i want you to take away as well the slope of the relative strength line is very very important to focus on that slope of the relative strength line should be in a very consistent uptrend as it moves into the breakouts. You can see that we have bullish synchronicity on our breakout. Look at the volume. It's probably two and a half times our 30 day average, if not three times. We have bullish synchronicity in terms of the widespread on that breakout as well. And if we look for those VCP characteristics and remember the wave analogy and the towel analogy, there's one, there's two, there's three, and then look how tight it gets in this final contraction. Okay, this final wave, this final ringing of the towel, whatever visually works very, very well for you. Remember, we're trying to tell ourselves the story here. So you can see how in this final part right underneath the pivot point, do you see how everything just tightens up in here? Look how this volume is generally below our 30 day average, especially on the three days prior. Let me just pull this down especially on the three days prior. This is absolutely fantastic. This is the market's way of screaming at us. No supply coming to the market, okay? And then on the breakout day itself, which was the 25th of September, 2006, over 15 years ago, about 15 years ago, it was a long time ago, okay? There's just no more supply coming. And then the scales have done this. The scales have tilted. Demand has become the dominant Force. So hopefully you guys got 10 out of 10 there. Comment down below, okay? If you did well, if you didn't do well, if there's anything you've learned as well, comment down below. If you want to learn more about this, I have I have 10 stock market trading courses which can be applied to crypto stocks, commodities, FX, whatever. You are just trading supply and demand. These VCP characteristics, okay, are a kind of backbone of my process as well as are some of the kind of other methodology methodologies which I will teach you. There's the premium membership if you want to learn more about that. There's links down below. If you're brand new to trading, I have a beginner's trading academy that's completely free to join. Okay, loads of great content in there. You just need an email address. And if you're new to this channel, I am trying to grow it, okay, to thousands and thousands of subscribers. I'm really trying to help loads and loads of people. So please do subscribe. Press, pre press the like button for me. It really helps me out. And as I've said, please leave me a comment down below and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.